This is going to be a screencast for how to send parents automated email notifications that their children have an overdue book at the library. The first thing you need to do is make sure you're in your Google Drive. Click on Create and create a form. Give the form a logical title like Overdue Library Book Notifications and click OK. That title automatically ends up right here. The first question should be name. Make this question, choose from a list, and then in the option one box you can actually copy and paste a list of names that you already have in another spreadsheet or in a, in a chart and it will automatically populate into these cells but for the meantime I'm just going to put in my own name just as a start. Make this question required and click done. For the next item, you do want a text. You're going to have book one. Make it required because the reason you're sending the form is they have at least one book overdue. Then you can actually just use this icon right here, which is duplicate, just change it to book two, but do not make this one required because they may only have one book overdue and these are just in case. Duplicate that question again, book three, not required, done. The next item is going to be original due date. And instead of a text, scroll down and choose date. I like to keep the year included. With the year included, you have this option of a calendar to choose a date. If you don't include the year, that option goes away and makes it a little bit more difficult. Make that a required question. And then duplicate that one and just change it to new due date and done. And this is your form. You have name, book one, book two, book three, original due date, new due date, and you can see which ones are required by the little red dot. Back in your editable form, click on view responses. And you can see all those questions are right here in your top header row. In column H, you can title it ODD. And in this one, NDD. And this column is going to be called parent email one and this one is parent email two. Leave these blank for now. Go back to your live form and let's fill it out once. Kim has the Hunger Games overdue and maybe also catching fire. My original due date was November 20th and because I'm overdue, I'm going to have this new due date of November 28th and I'm going to click submit. Submit another response appears, but I'm not going to do that just yet. In my spreadsheet, you can see that all that data from the survey I just filled out appears right here. And now what I'm going to do is create a formula right in here called equals the original due date and equals the new due date. The reason I'm doing this is because when I create my automated email, I don't want the date to look this way in the email. It's not as reader friendly. So what I'm going to do is click on this box, go over to format and number, and I'm going to change the number format to a date. If I go into more formats, more date and time formats, I can choose any one of these many options for date and time. And my personal preference is name of the month, followed by the number, apply. I'm going to do the same thing right over here, format, number, and it knows the last format I liked, so I'm going to choose that. Now in this column and in this column, you want the email address that is associated with the student who filled out the form to appear. So I need to put in a formula there, but first I have to get all my email addresses set up. Come down to the bottom and click the plus sign to add a new sheet. Rename this page emails. In the first cell type student and parent email one because a lot of kids have two parent emails. Make sure that the names that you print in this column 
are identical to the names that are in your drop down menu in your form. So imagine I have a hundred names filled in right here. All the students from my school and all their email addresses. Back on form responses one, I now need to come up with a formula which is equals VLOOKUP and all I did was type a V and all of these options come up. You want this last one here, VLOOKUP. I'm going to tell it whenever Kim appears in cell B2 then go into your other tab, highlight all three columns and go down to as many kids as are going to be in your survey. So let's say I have a hundred students. Press enter. It automatically takes you back to the first tab. In front of A, put a dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. After the 100, put a comma and the number two because the email address is coming from the second column on the email sheet comma false so that it stays consistent and then go to the end and press enter and you'll see here that because my name is Kim this first email address pops up. Now I don't need to retype it I can just control C or command C and paste command V or control C. Now it says not applicable the reason is when I pasted it the cell reference has shifted over to the right by one all I need to do is change this back to a B and it's done. But the issue is these are the same email addresses. That's not going to help me. What I need to do is make this email address come from the third column. So I'm going to change the 2 to a 3 and there we go. Now I have, because Kim filled out this survey, I have one email address and two email addresses. At this point I need to start doing my add-ons. I'm going to go into add-ons and I'm going to go into get add-ons and I'm going to search for an add-on called copy down. This is the copy down add-on from the New Visions Cloud Lab, Andrew Stillman's script, which is incredible. Now mine has already been added so yours will say free. Click on free and it will add it to your add-ons gallery. Copy down copy down setting. The sidebar opens up and just click on and then you're going to check all of the boxes under the paste as values column. This means that any formulas in the second row of your sheet which is right here will automatically be copied down every time a new form is submitted which is great because that means that this formatting will be copied down and these two VLOOKUP formulas will be copied down. Click Save and that's done. So now fill out another form. It has an overdue book called Divergent and it was due on November the 1st and now it's going to be due on November the 27th. So here you can see Kim has Divergent overdue and here is the new formatted original due date and the new format or uh, new due date and the email addresses have been pulled down right away. Perfect. We're ready to put in our next add-on. Again, go into the Get Add-ons gallery and you're going to search for Formule. Two M's. Again, I've already added it, so for you it will say Free. You click Free. And then go into your Add-ons gallery. Here's what it would look like and click Launch. When it opens, you want to select the sheet that's going to contain all of the email addresses and any of the other information that's going to be in your email and that for us is coming from form responses one. This is the really nice part. You can set this to trigger on submit so every time you fill out this form that a student has an overdue library book it will automatically send the email right away. You don't have to do this. You can send it at the end of the day and do it all manually but this is nice so you're not doing double work. Click Next. 
how many unique email templates do you want to use? So leave that as a one, and we can name this email template overdue library book notifications, and you are gonna send it for all rows in your spreadsheet. Save the template settings, and now you're going to move to edit your template. And this is going to be basically the last step. In the to column, put your cursor, scroll down the merge tags, click parent email one, comma, parent email two. And now it's going to go to both parent email addresses. If you wanted to, you could CC yourself if you wanted to keep a record in your email inbox of all the emails that you sent, but you really don't need to do this because you'll have all that data contained right in this spreadsheet. The subject, overdue library book notification four, and now scroll back up to the top for name. The name is right in there. Now for the body of the email, I've actually written this out just to speed up the time. To the parents or guardians of name. So just going to keep pasting it here. Parents or guardians of name. This is a notification that name has the following books overdue. So here I'm going to put book one. Now normally they won't always paste at the bottom. This is only because I already put in um, the text. Book two and book three. Now I know we haven't used a book three yet, but you want all three possibilities in there in case the student has three books overdue. So here we go. The original due date was, now I don't want this one and I don't want this one because this is the properly formatted one. I remember this from my spreadsheet. So here's my original due date. Put a period at the end. And then thank, uh, thank you in advance for helping your child look for and return the books by the new due date. Please do not respond to this email. Thank you. You can add something in like, feel free to contact me at uh, one, two, three. If you want to give them a contact number, thank you. And there we go. Now we can preview it. So for the first line, it's going to say to the parents or guardians of Kim, this is a notification that Kim has the following books overdue. And what I'm going to do is preview this and send all. Now it's going to show me what the email is actually going to look like. It says here, number of emails formula will attempt to send, two. Here's what the template was called. It's coming from the second row in my sheet. Here are the email addresses that this is going to go to. The subject, and there we go. The original due date, it's now due by then. And here's the second one. Now if I click send now, this is the record that I have on file the date the email was sent, the time the email was sent, and who it was sent to for both of these. If I go into my email inbox, I see right here, here are the two notifications. Here's the subject, very clear for the parent. Here's the content. It tells me which books were overdue, the original due date, the new due date, and the contact information. Hopefully, this process will help you speed up your returns of overdue library books and make your life a little bit easier. Feel free to let me know on G+. If you have any questions, I'm plus Kim Polishuk, or on Twitter at at Kim Polishuk.